to see you. Welcome back, welcome back. Thank you. 18 years, huh? Congrats. Um, yes, I'm allowed to vote. <laughs> Someone also suggested some other things we're allowed to do now, but maybe not. Um, we, talked a lot about, we talked about a lot about music. We talked about how YouTube is shaping and disrupting and redefining. We talked about uh, on, from the music side. So, so I'd love to understand more about the, 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 the creators, the media companies, the Gen Zers. Um, so, so what do creators care about now? See, Jasper's all about business. Like, straight in. Good morning, everyone, first of all. <laughs> He's jumping straight into the questions. Um, a lot of my team is here. Um, good to see you. I'm taking notice of those that are sleeping in, so we'll chat about that later. Um, <laughs> we did have a party last night. Hopefully you all had fun there. Um, but you know, Jasper, it's great to be here. Um, obviously a lot going on uh, in the video space. Look, creators, I mean, this is the best time to be a creator, right? If you think about the optionality that they have, the growth of not just YouTube, but other platforms. Um, and it's, you know, it's an amazing opportunity for them to express their creativity through multiple ways and formats. And I think on YouTube, we've always historically been focused on longer form video, video on demand. Uh, and as you know, we launched Shorts um, a few years back. India was the first market that we put that product out in. And it's seen tremendous success. So the stat, you know, we throw out big numbers. Um, 70 billion views on Shorts every day. Um, and 70 so billion. 70 billion views with a B, uh, with a B. Um, so it, the format is obviously resonating with users and with creators. Um, I think what creators are trying to figure out is how do they leverage multi-format? Um, and so now not only they have an option to create 5, 10, 15 minute videos, but they can engage with shorter form video. Um, we've just launched podcasts on YouTube, so audio. And then live streaming, um, you know, especially if you think about the gaming community and how important live streaming is. Um, and so the challenge is, how do you figure out for what you're trying to do, picking the right format um, that tell, helps you tell the story that you want to tell, helps you engage with fans and users in the best way. Um, so that's one piece of it. And it's not for, you know, multi-format is not for everyone, right? And we've, you know, initially when we launched Shorts, we said try Shorts to everyone, and it resonated with some creators, and it didn't. It requires its own unique skill set, and so we've seen Shorts-only creators succeed tremendously on the platform and go from zero to five million, ten million subscribers in a very short period of time. We've seen um, long-form creators embracing Shorts and doing well with both, uh, but then there's some that have tried it and said, look, I'm just going to stick with what I'm good at. Um, and so getting the right balance is, is one thing. The other thing that we hear is, you know, YouTube has always been about community. So when we put creators up on stage, they say one thing that differentiates YouTube from other platforms, which are feed-based, is, is the fact that you connect much more deeply with your fans uh, and with you, your users. And we provided tools to, to, for, for creators to be able to do that. And so that, that how do you leverage multi-format, how do you do shorts, but at the same time create that deep engagement that gives you a much more sustainable career, right? Like when you talk, when, when you talk to YouTube creators, they talk about their channels, they talk about their subscribers. And so how do you continue to use that as a currency? And then obviously money is on everyone's mind and uh, we want to make sure that we're giving our creators as many options as possible to generate revenue on YouTube. And today there's 10 different ways in which creators can generate Money on YouTube, you obviously have our ad-supported business, which is really strong. Subscriptions with YouTube Premium is growing. But then we have alternative monetization products like Super Chat, Super Thanks. Shopping is very nascent, but we're very excited about that. Um, and we paid out $50 billion to our partners in the last three years. And so when we talk about the foundations of the creator economy, like YouTube is basically providing that, that allows people to then build very successful careers on top of that. I mean, we have worked with you, we've worked with thousands of creators around the world. And it's amazing to see how, how their careers have changed and, and what they're getting into, into next, right? But they're still staying with, with the platform. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we mentioned Gen Z or Gen Z if I'm English. Um, what, what are you finding the, the Gen Z audience? Because they, they were the original, they were the OGs, right? They were 10 years ago, they were the teenagers who first got into YouTube and now that net, what are they doing 10 years later? Yes, uh, look, I mean, Gen Z's and teens 
are strong on, on YouTube. Um, when you think about teen audiences, there's a perception that they are gravitating much more towards short form video, and that's, that's true. Um, but there was a recent Pew Research study done which showed that 95% of teens, 13 to 17, are on YouTube. Um, and they're not just coming for the trend of the day, right? Uh, you know, these people care deeply about their communities. Uh, they care, care deeply about belonging. They're very passionate about certain subject matters. Um, and so they're, they're coming to be immersed in those types of things. Um, what's interesting is that it's not just to lean back. You know, what's, what's, what's unique is that this generation wants to participate. And so uh, being immersed uh, participating in a trend. In fact, I think the, 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 the stat that we have is 83% of Gen Z have actually posted a video online in the last year. Um, and so the, the participation piece of it is what's unique now. They want to be part of something. Uh, and you see that playing out. You know, I think the number of people that are actually creating video just for fun, hobbyists, has increased tremendously over the years. Um, and I think the... You know, we, we, we talked about this yesterday a lot. I mentioned those two letters, AI. Um, what is your attitude right now um, in general to, to the, the AI? So, look, AI is extremely exciting and um, is going to be transformative. Um, what's interesting is AI has become a hot topic this year. Web3, et cetera, was a year ago, two years ago, the buzzword. But as a company, we've been using AI in our products for a long, long time. Um, I mean, maybe six years ago that Sundar Pichai, our CEO, said We're, Google's an AI-first company. Um, and so on YouTube, we've been using AI to improve recommendations um, in search, um, to figure out how to provide better accessibility for our products um, in a lot of our uh, policy enforcement, if you think about the scale with which we operate, we really need to employ technology to catch a lot of content that's violative. So that's always been part of the platform and lots of Google products, not just YouTube. Um, what's interesting now is that with Gen AI, I think that there's an opportunity to supercharge creation. Um, so if you think about the ability for a creator to be able to do the things that they usually, usually spend hours and hours trying to figure out the right lighting, the dress, the makeup, um, the right setting, you can actually do that now. You can create a video and say, change my dress, change my hair color, give me a different background setting, etc." And so I think that that's really exciting because it will supercharge the creative process, make certain things much easier so that people can just focus on storytelling. Um, and that's good, right? And uh, you know, I think that that's going to see uh, improvements in the quality of content, a lot more people coming in and creating content, which is good for everyone. Um, and so that's good. Um, I think what's critical is that as we harness AI, and we've said that as a company, we want to make sure that we do that in a responsible way. Um, you know, responsibility has always been the foundation for us. Um, going back a few years, Susan, our CEO, when she was running the company, basically said, you know, responsibility is our number one priority. We want to make sure that we get this right. And so as we think about the challenges with Gen AI, uh, responsibility becomes that much more important. And you've seen that in the way that we're dealing with the music industry. I'm sure Paul talked about this yesterday. Um, you know, we've said publicly with Universal Music Group that we're going to create these principles together, right? And that together means is a, you know, that's an important word because it is truly with the spirit of partnership that we've had with the music industry for many, many years. Like, how do we define these principles? How do we make sure that we have the right protections in place? Um, I would say that we developed content ID to make sure that copyright was protected, that rightful uh, uh, owners of copyright had the ability to control how their content was being used and actually figure out how to make money from it. And, you know, and that's been... An, an, an important part of like what we offer to to rights holders and figuring out what that means in the world of AI is going to be really really important and I think that our challenges with trust and state safety are going to become a lot more complicated and so we made a commitment that uh, we've, we've invested a lot in in that area to make sure that we have a safe place for our creators advertisers and users and uh, we're just going to have to scale that up 
Um, and I think AI will, will play a big part in that as well. I mean, it's, it's, it, it is fascinating. We're talking about this ourselves. You know, at the end of every session, you've got a 20, 30, 40 minute session that we put up online. No one has, with all due respect to all of our speakers, no one has 45 minutes that they can sit in their office and look at a, a, a watch a laptop. Similarly, I don't have a, a video editing crew that can go through and pick out the important stuff and edit and edit. I, I'm looking forward to AI being able to help me do that and just go through what, what did Godham say this week that was important and turn it into a two minute short, fantastic. But you know, I mean, I think people underestimate how much hard work goes into that. We've done a lot of creator events together and during the day we have sessions like this, we've got an evening plan. Every night the creators go and say, I have four hours, five hours of work to do to edit the videos that I shot today, figure out my next script, et cetera, right? They don't sleep. Yep. And so how can we make their lives easier? And I, I think some of that also takes a toll on mental health. And imagine if you're able to do some of these things a lot easier, um, that will improve that as well, uh, which, which personally is something that's really important to me. So my suit can be red and I could lose 20 pounds? I think you and I wear the same thing every time we're on stage. <laughs> that's so. very true, actually. <laughs> um, um, so, uh, I've mentioned this yesterday, there's, there was the eSports Olympics were in Singapore a few months ago, and there's a few of the speakers this week were on stage with us there, uh, and Gotham is another Olympian. Um, so we are Olympians, we can get the, uh, the tattoos on our shoulders if we want. Um, there was something you talked about there that I thought was really fascinating, very insightful, about television being back. And that coming from the person who's running YouTube in, in Asia, Explain, explain that again, because it was really fascinating. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, right? So um, for the longest time, I mean, going back six, seven years ago, there was a platform shift and you know, a lot of consumption was happening on the, your PC screen. And suddenly we started seeing mobile um, growing across the world. Uh, and you know, for the longest time, mobile was our largest platform and we saw growth all over the world uh, for um, viewing on mobile devices. And going back a couple of years ago, we started noticing that actually living room, um, sitting on the big screen, uh, the YouTube app there was starting to get a lot more traction. Um, and today, uh, in a lot of our markets, that living room surface is now our fastest growing surface. So in APAC, if you look at markets like India, um, Japan, Korea, Vietnam, Vietnam first for strange reasons, has always had very, very high living room um, uh, uh, viewership. And it's a combination of content, right? It's uh, long form content that exists on the platform that people are consuming uh, on those big screens. I think part of the reason that some of the shorter highlights that we have have become longer, right? Like I'm a big tennis fan. I was you know, not waking up at 3 a.m. to watch the US Open matches, but uh, our partners were putting 15, 20 minute long highlights from those matches. I mean, it's pretty much a digest of the entire match. Like that's best viewed on the living room screen, right? There's creator content that is being consumed there and we've launched shorts on the living room. We're also making that surface more interactive, you know, because mobile is interactive. You've got ability to do a lot of things. So things like polling, chat, et cetera, so that it becomes an interactive medium. Um, and we're very excited that um, we've got products that are specifically built for that. So YouTube TV, which is just in the US, has seen tremendous success. Um, just this last weekend, we launched NFL Sunday Ticket. So if anybody out here is NFL fans. So the NFL has gone from television to now on YouTube, uh, which is a big deal. Uh, and the early numbers were very encouraged with. Um, and we've got something called Primetime Channels, which is OTTs being able to unlock uh, on YouTube and reach our massive audience of over 2 billion people uh, worldwide. And I think the benefit for users is they don't have to then switch from one OTT to the other, but they can actually go and consume content in the YouTube environment that they love so much with all the features that we offer. Uh, and I think that things like being in the living room and Sunday Ticket will um, help us also unlock things like multi-view, right? Imagine watching four or five NFL games simultaneously, which you can't necessarily do on your phone. So really exciting. I mean, I'm very excited with what's going on in the living room surface. Obviously, advertisers have always gravitated towards that. And so uh, uh, we're, we're seeing a lot of uh, excitement from, from the ad industry for this, for, for this growth as well. Fantastic. And, and 
talk about you know the global perspective and, and NFL in the US, um, and we've got NBA up next. But what's what's big in Asia for for YouTube right now? So I think that like the so for the last few years, I think it's been short form video. It's been um, you know. Uh, people that weren't creating before, uh, you know, if you think about a market like India, where we have, uh, you know, 450 million odd daily active users, um, but the creator system, I wouldn't call it small, but compared to the size of the, the user base, uh, uh, it wasn't as large as we, you know, would have hoped for it to be. Um, but then with shorts, that changed, right? Because it allowed so many people just with the phone and nothing else to be able to create good video and become part of that. You know, we would go out and talk to a lot of these shorts creators and they always said, you know, YouTube was always the aspiration. It was just too difficult, right? Because it required editing software, it required all of that. And now mobile has just unlocked all of that. Um, so that's been very exciting to see that play out in each and every market here, right? So much, much deeper participation, expansive growth in, 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 in the number of creators that we're serving as partners. Um, and, and the next phase of this, to me, is commerce, video commerce and shopping. Um, it's very early days for us, um, but I think some of the things that we've done across uh, some of our markets have been very exciting. You know, look, we know that people have been coming to YouTube for years to learn about products, right? Do research. If you think about categories like electronics, fashion and beauty, sports equipment, cars. You know, people used to go to search, now they go to YouTube, and that's where they find a lot of this, this information. So we have that consumer coming in, trying to get educated about products, and what we want to now help them do is make that purchasing decision and actually buy right on YouTube. And so we're, you know, we're making progress both on first party, which is creators and partners that have their own merchandise and products, uh, being able to sell, sell on YouTube. Um, in fact, we've connected over 100,000 shops uh, that are owned by creators and artists and, and, and brands uh, on YouTube already. Um, we've seen tremendous success with live in Korea. Um, this is a crazy st st stat. Six out of ten people in Seoul have bought something from live streaming uh, wow. in the last year. So, you know, very, very, very uh, like broad-based adoption of, of video commerce. Um, and so we're excited about that as well. And then we're busy building out an affiliate program, which will help creators that have products in their videos tag them and then be able to earn from, from purchases that happen. Um, so yeah, I, like that's a massively untapped area uh, where we we're seeing early success, and so I'm excited to see where that goes. What, what kind of product category is in, in Korea? What, what is, it, is it beauty? Is it makeup? Is it all sorts? It's fairly it? broad-based, actually, right? Um, uh, but, but yeah, fashion and beauty and electronics lead, um, but you know, there's, there's much more than that. I'm trying to think if in the red suit, 20 pounds yeah, lighter, you exactly. know, we could start streaming it live. Your avatar will get <laughs> fitted in, in two seconds. Um, so so you, you, you mentioned partnerships and you talked about um, uh, Universal and then yesterday we had, uh, we had Rushit talking about the partnership with Unilever. Um, how important really, you know, how important are those partners to you in, in this part of the world? So YouTube has built, I mean the foundations of YouTube has been, have been built on partnerships. Um, and you know, my team that's here, that's what they focus on day in, day out, is making sure that our partners are successful and happy uh, on the platform. And we do partnerships, I mean, some of these may not be obvious, right? But if you think about access, we do partnerships with telcos across the region to make access more affordable. Uh, we've done that for years. Um, we are partnering up with telcos for YouTube Premium. So that's a category of partnerships. Um, we do partnerships with device manufacturers, so to ensure that YouTube on the TV screen, on game consoles, the app is available. Um, we obviously have partnerships, you know, we wouldn't be here if we didn't have creators and music partners and partners from the media industry, sports organizations, um, you know, and there's massive diversity when it comes to content partners that we work with. Um, then, you know, when you look at uh, obviously brands, I mean, I would call brands that work with us partners as well because without them we wouldn't have an ecosystem because they help monetize the content that pays out creators. Uh, and then even in the trust and safety area, we partner with a lot of NGOs and government organizations to make sure that uh, we are 
catching content that's violative, uh, that we're improving our trust and safety operations. So truly, like the entire ecosystem that we have that we call like, you know, users, creators, monetization, and responsibility is all fueled by successful partnerships. So to me, like each and every one of those is as critical um, for the success of the platform as a whole. Fantastic. Well, I actually should, I'm going to use this as a cheeky opportunity to promote. There is a session this afternoon on partnerships uh, where we've got Cathay, we've got Cisco, and we've got Visa all talking about how they're partnering uh, with whether it's sport, whether it's platforms and stuff like that. So, so it's, it's something that's always been very, very dear to, to, to us as well. Um, final question for you. Um, we've talked about creators, talked about Gen Z, talked about AI, talked about the TV being back. We talked about live shopping. What's really exciting for you right now? What, 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 what's what, what's um, getting you up in the morning? Um, all of that. <laughs> you know, I, I think that um, what's really fascinating about YouTube is that we, we're so multidimensional, right? And um, each one of these opportunities is massive in itself. And so if you think about, you know, the core ads business and obviously making sure that we continue to build that out and have a platform and ads products that are exciting for advertisers, you know, the subscription business, we're extremely happy with how that's going, but there's so much more upside um, uh, to, to be able to expand that. Um, you know, just ensuring that, you know, we don't take things for granted. There's a lot more competition and optionality now. Uh, and so ensuring that YouTube continues to be the home for creators, right? This is where uh, they, they truly see this as their home and they do other things, but this is where they come back again and again and connect deeply with their fans. Um, and, and all the new businesses, you know, I think we're still very early on getting shorts and that part of the business, right, and shopping. So it's, to me, it's like, it is all of that, right? And that, that you know, makes me wake up every Monday morning or every morning and get excited to go to work. And every market is different. Every market is in a different stage of its evolution. Um, and so, you know, never a dull, dull moment, right? The question should have been, when do you ever sleep, I guess. But so so that, um, unfortunately, we are out of time, but we have talked a lot about this shopping and stuff. And, um, I thought the Gen, the, the Gen, AI, Gen AI conversation was, was fascinating in terms of it, it making life easy if you know how to work with it. It's making life easy. It's not challenging you. Um, I loved what you're saying about responsibility, about safety, um, and I'm looking forward to losing 20 pounds with my, with my avatar. But uh, thank you so much again for coming back. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Gotham Anand. Thank you.